We all have one. That space in the corner of the room devoid of anything. A shadowy recess or blank wall known as... The Dead Zone. Well, ladies and gentlemen, and all variations thereupon, this is mine. And this is how to bring life to the Dead Zone. Okay, so that's six pieces cut out. I've positioned them along the lines that I've drawn, but the cardboard is positioned along the lines so I can see that it's all gonna be um, matched up. I'm going to stick these together with the glue gun. If you're going to double up the card and make it stronger, then you need to re-measure the outside once you put these together because the outside measure will have increased slightly and you don't wanna have gaps around the outside. You'll also need to cut um, on a diagonal then the sides make sure they fit snugly together. So this one's the prototype and as you can see I can get a good solid fit around this side but then there's a gap there so it means these ones on this side will cut a bit wide of that ridge the uh, way it's been glued together and it's created a bit of a gap with the thickness of the glue and that's because of the old glue gun it wasn't quite getting hot enough so I've put extra glue there and it's bulged out so that's something to keep in mind when you're actually um, constructing one yourself. Thickness of the glue in the glue gun. There we are, still not perfect. This is just the prototype one. The ones that will actually go on the wall, this will be much further forward. I don't want anything in front of these, so this would sit at the front of the shelf but that's basically the way I want it to look. So not all of these hexagons are going to have a picture in the background. I only have four pictures, but I want to fill that um, entire space down there. So I'm going to need a lot of these hexagons, but I also want light to be able to shine through from the back. One way to do that would be to make a bunch of hexagons out of perspex or glass or something, something transparent and rigid that light can shine through but that would be expensive and I'm trying to minimize uses of plastic so my idea is to use extra pieces of cardboard to reinforce against the template to ensure that the angles are correct. The trick to ensure that you only glue card on the side you need to, first time, is to fully build up the bottom layer of hexes. Then attach only the backing supports in position. This will allow you to easily see what sides to attach.
stop. Did you see my mistake? When I measured both the back support and the hex wall, I measured to the outside line of the templates. So by gluing the wall to the outside of the backing hex, as I have done here, I've created a gap at the corner of the shelf. The correct thing to do is to glue the walls to the front face of the backing support. Top tip, sticking only half of the backing material down at a time will allow you to keep the material taut. Okay, so I've put the plastic backing onto the shelf. You notice I've left four areas that are blank and that's because these are the areas where I'm going to put the pictures and I want to be able to reach my hand in the back in order to straighten them up. So the next part is going to be wiring it all up. Okay so the next part is we're going to be attaching LED lights to the back of the shelf. Because I only want one light where three hexagons meet as part of the design. Uh, I don't need this many lights. I could just stick them all on and just wrap it around and just as it is. But in order to be more efficient with the lighting, I'm going to be cutting them up into smaller parts. Where this line is, is the section of the LED lights where you can cut safely without damaging any of the electronics. And it's also the point on which you solder things up. So I'm going to cut these out into small sections at these lines, get 24 different lights, which I think is the number I need for this project. And then wire it up so I can use the minimum number of lights I need for the distance I want to cover. So just a quick and simple. And that's one cut. Now you need to do it for another 24. Good news everyone! Now I get to show you some of the various lengths of wire I'll be using. The wire is going to be running in between the hexagons with an LED light positioned where three hexagons meet. Now I've colour coded these so that it's easier to follow. The That's the very bottom of the shelf where the uh, main power input comes in. The red and blue wires are running up the shelf and the black and white wires are running down the shelf and we're going to be bridging uh, around the bottom of the hexes so that we don't end up with wires exposed at the top and basically we're just going to follow a snake pattern all the way around so everything's uh, lined up in series okay so that's the way we're going to weld it up um weld it up that's the way we're going to solder it up uh, I'll show how you, we solder the individual LEDs up and the way we're going to do it is solder the whole thing up and then stick it on. Which is uh, going to be slightly more um, tricky to get it all to stick but it will be safer than putting a soldering iron next to the cardboard. So okay, let's get on with that. I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see this on YouTube but you see the um, copper plates at the bottom there is a positive and a negative and when I'm soldering this up we're going to have it so that the black and the blue wires are always connected to the positive and the red and the white wires are always going to be connected to the negative just so it's easy for you to follow along. It's very important that we do not let the positive and the negative 
touch each other at any point because that will create a short that will just mess up the circuit and could potentially um, make a fire hazard at some point. So the first operation is going to be to solder the specific wires to these plates and to do that once the camera focuses we've got this set up. Strictly speaking this isn't necessary but having the extra clips will give um, an extra pair of hands making it easier to use everything. Also in the first Iron Man movie Tony Stark is using one of these to uh, do some repairs on his boot which means that whilst using it I can feel like I'm Iron Man. So um, what I'm going to do is attach a wire. It's hard to do this whilst the YouTube. Okay, so this is a blue wire, so it's going to go to the positive, and this is going to be the first one with the power cable attached. And basically, all I'm going to do is solder that onto there. Now, as you can probably see, I've stripped back the wire so that only um, so that the metal is exposed. This is a copper single core wire with the, the tin coating. And I'm just going to apply a small amount of solder to the end in order to attach that. I've got my soldering iron here and a wet sponge to douse the soldering iron, should I need to. And that was very difficult to do while I was showing it on camera. So I'm not going to show you that too many times. But basically that's what we're aiming for. To sold out the wire onto the specific pad. Don't want anything to cross over onto the negative part. So this can now be released. Solder, I keep saying weld, but actually soldering. So I've wired the blue to the positive and the red to the negative. On the other ones, it will be black to positive, white to negative. So if you're following along and you see that, that's the way around it's going to be. And this is going to be running up, black and white is going to be running down, as I've said. Right. Now that all that has been uh, soldered up into one contiguous wire, we need to attach it to the back. And in doing this, we need to be very mindful of safety. You see, the wires, as they are, because they've been stripped back, are exposed, as is the solder on the actual LED. Now, we, there's two things we need to be mindful of. We can't let the wires touch each other because that will create a short circuit, break the system and potentially pose a fire hazard. The other thing is we can't let the bare wire touch the cardboard or any of this um, backing material simply because that is again a fire hazard. What we're going to need to do is peel off the sticky back to the LEDs then before we attach it use some sort of insulation like electrical tape or a shrink wrap to seal off those wires preventing them from touching each other or the cardboard then sticking the whole thing to the back of the shelf. And we need to do this carefully and make sure that the, there is no exposed wire which is going to be touching anything. Okay so Here's the first LED. The first thing we're going to do is peel off the sticky backing. And before we stick it down, I take some electrical tape, make sure that the solder and the wires aren't actually touching each other. Cover the wires and wrap the tape around. So now the exposed wire is insulated. And it's still the sticky back to the LED. The LED then is going to be placed at the corner 
where three of the hexagons join. And there we have it. What was once just a blank canvas is now a wall filled with memories of adventure and childhood nostalgia. Just a thing to turn a house into a home.